where I play, as long as I go number one in the draft. From the Erie Otters, Connor McDavid. From the London Knights, Mitch Marner. From the Western Hockey League's Brandon Wheat Kings, Nolan Patrick. This is Tracking the Draft with Craig Button. He checks an enormous amount of boxes. Nobody in this draft did more with less. I absolutely love him. It's not his skills that anybody's concerned about. It's that playing attitude. And quite frankly, it's really poor. Speeding towards the future of the NHL. From the U.S. Development Program, Jacob Truba. From Faryastad of the Swedish Elite League, Jonas Brodin. From the Boston U Terriers, Brady Kachuk. He could play in the NHL next year. He's one of those guys. Here's your host, Dean Millard. Hello there, and welcome to another episode of Tracking the Draft with Craig Button, the director of scouting for TSN. will be along very shortly. This is episode 23 of season two, where the stars of tomorrow are discovered and discussed. And man, we have... Four players that we are going to be talking about today that have an opportunity tonight to shine on the international stage. Canada versus Russia, U18 gold medal game. And you're going to see Ivan Mirshichenko forward. Uh, the NFT was purchased by Pipeline Prospects for $400 last summer. He has six goals, two goals last night in that semifinal win. Uh, he's eligible for the 2022 draft, where this guy is most likely going to go first overall, at least according to the president of high-level scouting and the director of scouting for TSN, Craig Button. You'll hear his thoughts on Shane Wright a little bit later, but uh, Craig is the president of high-level scouting, owned by my wife, Trish Millard, and Trish outbid everybody for Shane Wright last summer, $525. He had a hat-trick on uh, opening night of the tournament, seven goals, four assists in four games. But that's not all. 2023 is on display at this tournament, too. Matt Michkov, a forward for the 2023 draft, $350 for this NFT purchased by Ruby ISS. And wow, look at the total, 11 goals. Two helpers. He's got the Cy Young down for sure in the tournament, but uh, 13 points in six games. And think about how many years he can come back and play in this tournament. Uh, it's amazing. This you, you could be looking at the all-time leader in goals in this tournament at, uh, at some point down the road. And you are probably going to be looking at the number one pick for the 2023 draft, also owned by Ruby ISS. Good bidding. Uh, from uh, the gang there, six hundred and ten dollars. Uh, Harrison leading the way there, bidding on Connor Bedard, and why not six six six? The number of the beast, six goals, six assists in six games at this tournament, and uh, it will be so fun to watch these players strut their stuff tonight in the final. Of course, Craig joins us courtesy of the UFFS Hotline. Yes, it is uh, the ultimate fantasy platform. Blows anything out of the water that you've seen before. Check out the website, www.uffsports.com. You can become a scout. These guys that we're talking about, they've already been purchased, but we're always looking ahead to 24, 25. So start putting your scouting knowledge to good use. Register as a scout. I think it's only 25 bucks. Get in the game where you own the game and start registering some of these uh, future NFT players. It is uh, a great way to go. And we're going to talk about some of these outstanding players with the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Craig Button. So let's bring in the director of scouting from TSN right now. Here he is. The director of scouting for TSN, former GM of the Calgary Flames, and a Stanley Cup champion with the Dallas Stars. Plus, he's a sharp-dressed man with a heart of gold and a passion to match it. Craig Button.
All right, Craig, so much excitement tonight. Uh, 7 o'clock my time, 9 o'clock Eastern, the final of the Under-18 World Championship, Canada and Russia. And, you know, one result, I guess, of COVID-19 shutting down a lot of leagues this year is, you know, the Canadian teams that were relying on uh, players in, in the CHL didn't have to worry about playoffs, unfortunately, for that. But because of that, is this one of the better Canadian teams that you've seen in recent years? There's no question that it is. There's simply, you know, when you think about the quality of player that is on this Canadian team, you know, and that's what it's predicated on. It's predicated on who's going to be available uh, as the CHL playoffs, you know, progress. And, you know, when when Canada has their best opportunity for gold, it's it's usually an upset or two that's uh, afforded Hockey Canada a couple of players or three or four to, to that extent. But what I would say to you too, Dean, is that this year, the Quebec League is having playoffs. So the, the three Zachs, uh, mm. Zachary uh, Leharu, Zachary Bolduc, who's hurt, he wouldn't be available anyway, and Zachary Dean, they'd all be on this team. They're all, so, so they're not available. Carson Lambos got hurt, uh, you know, in the bubble, or had a, heart, had a heart ailment, just an irregular heartbeat that they had to monitor. He would be on this team. Cole Sillinger would be on this team. So mm. this team is still lacking, you know, uh, you know those high end players. You know those players. Uh, it's it's not like it's complete, but you know the depth of Canada always, uh, you know, rises and steps in. But it's a lot easier for for those players to step in when you have that high end talent. And and it's very interesting in a year where you have Shane Wright and Connor Bedard, who, who not only are, are outstanding players, but real key players for this team, Canada, you know, that's another rarity that uh, puts this team in rarefied air as, uh, you know, uh, arguably one of the best ever at, at the U18 tournament. To, it's going to be hard if they go and, and win the gold medal against Russia. Uh, and what they've done to this point in time, they, they've got a clean sheet. They haven't trailed in any game. They have six and zero. Uh, they've won resoundingly. They've won some tight games where they were uh, tested. You know, t- just in terms of different styles of play. But when you start to consider, uh, you know, the potential for a seven and zero record, if they don't fall behind, that they would have never been behind in the entire tournament. You know, that puts you into a, a category of uh, pretty much best ever. Yeah, no doubt, and 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 that makes that this game tonight so intriguing because, uh, you know, I've I've been impressed with the the Russians and as well. So maybe just what's something you're really looking forward to tonight between uh, the all time great rivals, Canada Russia. Yeah, and I think that's the, 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 right there the all time great rivals, right? Like I mean, it's a it's a rivalry that will never uh, uh, get old. It, it, it will always survive the test of time and. You know, I think Canada has uh, lots of lots of really good uh, players throughout their lineup. I think Russia does too. What I think it's going to come, to, I shouldn't say, it's not, it never comes down to one thing solely, but I think where Canada has a really significant advantage is in that, is, is in that second line center area. You know, the top line for Russia, which is Miroshnichenko, Svechkov is an outstanding center. And then Sura uh, Yurov, who plays on the right wing. I mean, th- I don't care who they're playing against. They're going to hold their own. They're going to match up. They're going to, I mean, they're a handful. They're so good. Uh, but then the next center, uh, whoever's going to get McTavish or Wright. So you can put Svechkov against McTavish or Wright. That's not a problem. Well, who's Russia going to put against the other guy? <laughs> And I think that's where Canada has a has a real has a real advantage. So you got McTavish and Stan Coven and Bedard playing on the one line. Uh, you have Othman, Wright, and uh, Gunther on the other line. So you know Chibrikov plays uh, on on that second line. Uh, you know they have some, but it's the center ice position that I think can really tip the scales in Canada's favor. You know as you get down in, in, into into the four groups, seven to twelve. You know uh, it's pretty much a, a soft. I think that Russia has good players, Canada has good players that are going to do whatever they need to do. I think the blue lines are relatively uh, equal, and and I say that overall. You know Russia doesn't have a Brant Clark, but they got length and they got size, and they go six seven deep. Uh, they're hard. They they compete hard. They they play hard. They're smart, and you know they might not have the top end of a, of, of a Brant Clark or a Coolamins, but th- their depth is really good. Goudreau might be the other guy. Like you know, I think his goaltending has been sim- simply exceptional. Uh, Ivanov, who's the young goaltender, who by all 
uh, measures uh, sh should get the start. He was named one of Russia's three best players, so I can't imagine they're not starting him in a gold medal game. You know, maybe Goudreau gets a little bit of an edge, but it's not it's not one that you go, oh boy, that really is going to be a concern. I, I think it comes right down to that to that line matchup against uh, who Russia is going to have to face one or the other, Wright's line or McTavish's line. And I think right, it tips let's... the favors in Canada's in Canada's way. I really do. I think that that I think that's a differentiator in this in this match. Well, let's get into uh, right now one of the players that Canada is going to have to deal with, uh, Ivan Miroshnichenko, uh, a forward. And Pipeline Prospects purchased this NFT for $400. Uh, six goals, two assists in six games in the tournament. Two goals in that semifinal. I loved your uh, your line about it being ballet on ice because both of them, he froze the Finnish goaltender oh. and then and then buried it. And that is such a skill for guys to be able to do. It, it seems like he is better when he's on the move with the puck as opposed to some guys are better in that kind of static scoring area. What do you think? Yeah, you, you know, we think of, of Ovechkin who did that, you know, what's going to be ever considered forever the Ovi spot, right? Who just pounds the puck, right? But like uh, Mirosh Nechenko is, is really gifted. He's a, he, he attacks. When you think about the first goal against Finland, I mean, he, he, he and, and, and the Finnish goaltender was really, really good. That would have been a blowout. If it wasn't for the Finnish goalie, yeah, and you know it goes right down to the wire. Where and Finland just does this all the time. They find a way to stay in a the game. They find a way to make life uncomfortable for an opponent. But that first goal, I mean, Rostyshenko, he's moving, and and then he just gives a little fake, and that was just enough to open it up. And it, it it's the whole sequence, uh, Dean, of of a goaltender and a and a shooter going head to head. Like, how can I get a little more room? How can I get just the the, the slightest of opening to take advantage? And and when he did, you know, and, and, and you're working it that way, there, there it goes. It, it, it reminds, it, and I use the example in the broadcast, it, it's like a pitcher going against a batter. A, a batter is going to fall off the pitcher, pitch them off, but sooner or later, somebody's got to win the battle. It's either going to be the pitcher or it's going to be the hitter. And I, I, I found that Marashnichenko, I'll call him the hitter, he got the better of the pitcher uh, on that first goal. And then the second goal, I mean, he, he's attacking the net, and he just froze him. I mean, he literally just froze him. And, and it, you, you know, Dean, uh, from your experiences, you know, it, it, it looks easy, and, mm -hmm. and, the, and the top end players uh, make it look easy, but it's anything but easy. Yeah, that, that's a skill because, you know, it, it takes a certain amount of speed and a certain amount of patience. Uh, Russia, as you said, kind of lulled the Finns to sleep and then attacked. So it really is a skill, and it takes skilled players to be able to pounce and do that. Now, the one thing I also noticed is there was a little bit of undisciplined play when it came to turnovers uh, earlier in the game. And you and I talk a lot about risk-reward. If if the reward is, is way up there, you can deal with some of the risk. And, and I guess, first of all, is that just a one-off or is, you know, is that something? that you know he he has to get rid of his game and then if it is is the reward way worth the the risk of any kind of defensive play oh the rewards with marasnichenko are, 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 are significant let like, make no mistake about it you know but there's moments in a game and it's part of youth it's just part of youth you mm -hmm. know when, when, when the price you, you know is when you're younger and you're so much better than everybody the price you pay for those mistakes aren't nearly as severe but as you move up in levels and the competition becomes harder and more difficult, the, the price becomes more significant. So I, I think it's 100% developmental. I think it's 100% just understanding and learning and managing the game. But, you know, when you've been able to, to do things uh, with, yeah, and I don't want to say it's not a negative, do things without uh, any type of, uh, 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 you know, consequence that's significant, you know, you don't really realize it. Well, now you start to go, okay, I can't do that. I can't do that. And I mean, he's a, he's a terrific player. You don't want to stifle creativity. You don't want to, but there's, there's moments in time where you got to just remind the player, Hey, you know what? Make plays. Just, just be aware of when you, where you are on the ice when you're trying to make some of those. Well, especially against the Finns who are so good at uh, turning over oh. pucks. Uh, they're, they're magicians. Well, one guy that I don't think you're talking uh, about turnovers a lot because his all-around game is so good is Shane Wright. And, you know, we're focusing on the 22 and 23 drafts, looking ahead a little bit. He's a contender uh, for number one, high-level scouting. Uh, my lovely wife, of which you were president of scouting, uh, strategically went after this guy. $525 for this NFT. And uh, every game I watch, I get more excited for high-level scouting. 
As for this tournament, Craig, it's been a long time since uh, you know you've been able to watch Shane. Right? Was there anything different in his game? Is there anything that you saw that he has maybe added to his game, or you know, you noticeably different than maybe the last time you saw him? Well, I, I saw him at the at the Red Deer World Junior Camp. He played right. there. And we had a number. Of, there, was, there was some scrimmages and there was some games, uh, the red white games that, that we broadcast. Uh, so you know, it, it wasn't that long ago that I got to see him right. And you know, uh, and, and when you watch him over time, you watch him in midget, you watch him, you know, turn uh, into uh, you, you get to junior. You watch him at the U seventeen. You watch him down the stretch. You watch him, and. I guess what I would say, have I learned anything about Shane Wright? Yeah, I, I, I've learned that uh, I know how darn good he is. Hmm. He's only getting better. He's only, he, like, he, he, he is, like, he is, uh, in a, he, he is an elite, complete centerman. He's a superstar. Dude. I honestly believe he could play in the NHL next year. Wow. I, I think that's how good he is. I think he's that good. And, you know, I'm not one to rush players ahead. You know that. But I, he is that mature. He is that skilled. Brainiac on the ice. Skilled. Competitive. And, you, you know, the, the, he, he's going to be the first pick in the 2022 draft. Because th if there's a better player than him, then tell me where he is. Just and I'll, go, I'll go to the ends of the earth to watch this player. Because if, if there's a player better than Shane Wright, we're talking about a massive superstar. We might be talking about the greatest superstar of all time, but, you know, McDavid, Gretzky, or like, that's what you'd have to do to unseat Shane Wright. If, the, if he was in this year's draft, there, he, he'd be unquestionably the first overall pick. Unquestionably. No, okay. he, has, he has no equal in this year's draft. He has no equal in this year's draft. Okay, so I'm. That's are, what are I've we, learned about Shane Wright. <laughs> are we bringing in the G word with this guy? Is this generational talent? You and I have had that conversation about what a guy kind of has to be to be considered that potential generational talent. Are you are you are you comfortable throwing that tag on Shane Wright yet, or do you want to wait? No, no, no. I'm not putting it on him. I'm not going to put it on him. I don't okay. think he is a generational talent. The, the generational talent is reserved for the very few. Uh, it's Gretzky. It's Orr. It's mm -hmm. McDavid, it's Lemieux. The, 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 let's be Crosby. It's very clear where this one starts and finishes for me. Okay, and uh, there's no way. And I, I like, is Nathan McKinnon a generational player? No. Is mm -hmm. Artemi Panarin a generational player? Is Patrick Kane a generational player? Austin Matthews? A gen no, they're not generational players. They're superstars, and we've seen mm -hmm. a lot of superstars. The generational player is reserved for the very, very few, and there is, in my view, no way. No way, and you, you know you, you look at him, and I but like I said, he is a, uh, in the, the com complete elite centerman. Yeah, like, I'm gonna in make every regard. Make a great Everybody first right. Patrice pick. Bergeron. Yeah, P Patrice Bergeron is going to the to the Hall of Fame. Patrice Bergeron is going to be in the Hall of Fame when I say complete. So you know you've heard me use the term lowercase. Like he might be uppercase Patrice Bergeron. Mm. That means Very, that means I'm talking really about a good. player that might be better than Patrice Bergeron. <laughs> yeah, that that would be really, really, really good. Uh, also, what's really great is that uh, Craig joins us, courtesy of the Ultimate Fran Franchise Fantasy Sports Hotline. Scouting, massive part of the platform lifeblood of the ultimate fantasy hockey league free agents go through scouts so get in the game where you own the game scout real world players make side cash put your talent to good use become an independent scout form a partnership with an existing franchise when you're allowed to go to games again or when you're watching guys on tv you could actually say I like that guy's skill. I'm going to see if he's available, and I'm going to list him for $20 or get him in an auction. Check out all the details at www.uffsports.com. All right, let's take a look at the uh, the 2023 class uh, because there's some great players, and uh, one of them on the screen there, Matt Vemichkov of Russia. Ruby ISS snagged this guy, a bit of a bidding war, $350. And, man, what a tournament. 11 goals, two assists in six games. Uh, Craig, what should uh, would-be scouts, fans, as they're watching the game tonight, what should they watch for with this player? What's one thing you should tell them to watch for? 
Well, he, he uh, but I would say he's got a great delay in his game. Like, and, and by that, what I mean is, is he can come in and, you know, with the poise, with the puck, holding the puck, holding the puck. And then, you know, you don't know what he's going to do. He, he, he is, uh, he's going to, he's going to probe for opportunities. He's going to be looking for where those opportunities and, and, and he's really patient at, at waiting on them. And then when you open up, he, he, he's got a, He's got a lightning quick release. He doesn't. He he disguises his shot so well. So goaltenders really have a tough time getting a read on it. But you know when he gets in and around that net, I mean, the heads up, the awareness, the, the you know everything that he's trying to do. He's he's trying to look for those openings, and if they're not quite there, he's trying to find a way to get you opened up a little bit more. And when he does, if, if you look at his first goal last night, mm-hmm. uh, his only goal in the game against Finland, I mean. He, he steps in and then he quickly sees that the goaltender's completely off his angle. And it, it, it was by him. There was just no chance for the goaltender to get reset. I don't see that after the fact, but I was watching the Finnish goaltender and, he, you know, he's, he's looking to where he was. He's kind of looking at where his positioning was and he knew that he was off his position. You, you give Mitskov an inch, he's going to take it. And he doesn't need a foot. He needs an inch. And he, he's magnificent at being able to get the shot off and, and the, the ability to open up a goaltender and, and, and to, you know, find those openings and get the goaltender to move just enough where he, he can, you know, a lot of times finish and, and, and make a real dangerous shot. Is, is um, unpredictability a good thing in his game when it comes to, you know, the defenseman or the goaltender? Not really sure what sort of path he might take. I mean, you know, patience has always been uh, a trait I've admired in, in a lot of different Russian hockey players. And it seems the skilled ones always have that patience and that bit of unpredictability to their game. Now, we, we talked about Ovechkin before, but, you know, so, some of the guys like, you know, you just wonder, is this guy going to drive? Is he going to stop and shoot? And is he going to wait me out? What kind of, uh, I guess, unpredictability does he have in that game when you're the opposition? Well, you just described this game, I think, uh, perfectly. Well, if, if he's going to wait to see what he's going to do, how can a defender know what he's going to do? <laughs> like, that unpredictability keeps everybody back on their heels. It keeps everybody off balance. It, it's, a, it's an unbelievable trait. You know, Patrick Kane is a phenomenal player, and he, he's a Hall of Famer and everything that goes with it. And when you watch Patrick Kane, Patrick Kane holds the puck. He's waiting for you to do some things, and then, you're, you, okay, is he going to do this? And because they're so confident holding the puck, because they're so patient, right, that they almost make you feel like, okay, like he should have given this puck up by now. Their patience makes you uncomfortable. You know, they, they back you off. They, it, it's... At the longer they hold the puck, the more anxious you get. You know, we, we see in the game a lot of player, a lot of teams want to put pressure. But when you play against the likes of Patrick Kane and, and a young Matt Bay Mitchkoff and a Mitch Marner who have this unbelievable ability to hold on to the puck, to, to wait to see what you're going to do before they commit to anything, it's really unsettling. And Mitch, Mitchkoff has that quality. Yeah, it's so exciting watching those guys. I mean, you, you watched Russia on the power play. There was no panic in their game at all. And just the patience. Sometimes they can be over patient, but then they strike with, with lightning quickness. And uh, th- that that's going to be the one thing that I think Canada is going to have to be really careful of tonight is not giving those uh, kind of opportunities. Um, you know, the Canadians, obviously, they can strike with a lot of accuracy as well, as did uh, some guy named Bedard uh, did yesterday. Uh, just brilliant uh, Connor Bedard we're talking about for the 2023 draft and $610 massive bidding war in the early going won by Ruby ISS for this NFT he's been brilliant in this tournament six goals six assists uh, I, I really I really feel silly now asking you if Connor Bernard is going to be able to play a top role in this uh, in this tournament but I, I I would didn't even expect this much because you know I haven't had a chance to watch him a lot although we almost had two points a game for Regina in the bubble uh, but just take us through last night and, and what really impressed you about how he got on the score sheet in different ways. Well, you, you know, I, I, I want to go back a little bit in time here. You know, in game four last Saturday when Canada was playing Belarus, you know, you could see that Connor, you know, was was fatigued. 
and, and it wasn't just the physical fatigue, it was the mental fatigue as well. He had never played four games in five days at this level of competition, ever. You know, you play four games in five days, but not at this level. This is a, I mean, this is a massive jump up with respect to, uh, you know, the level you're going to play at, right? So he, he, you could see, and I, I, I felt that watching him in that game, a day's rest was good. Honestly. He gets a day off on Sunday, and what does he do coming back Monday? I mean, it's a five-point game. He's refreshed. He's re-energized, you know, and, and, and the mental part of it is just as important as the physical. And now he gets another day off. So now you're talking about two days off out of three, you know, when, you, when you've just gone through a grind, and he comes back last night and he had just as much energy. So when we look at the game last night, I mean, early on in the game, he, he made a shot. He came in. You might, you might remember it. He came in, and he tried to put it uh, – he was coming down the right wing, and he tried to put it under the arm of Lindbaum, like right mm -hmm. into that little spot on the arm on the short side. And Lindbaum closed it off, and Bedard was mad at himself. He, he kind of, you know, banged his stick on the boards. You know, those top-end players, they see a spot, and when they don't get it through, they're like, I can't believe I didn't get it through. It's, it, it's, it's a hallmark of excellence. So now Connor doesn't – now he comes down a little bit later in the period, and where does he go? He goes – low stick from the same spot, far side. And, you know, you watch how a shooter sets up a goaltender. And then what does he do? He comes down, on at the and I think it was the dagger, I think the third goal, where he scores that goal. I, I was looking right at it, Dean. I don't know how he put it in that spot. I just don't. <laughs> but, you know what, Try you can't explain the, you can't explain greatness, right? You just can't. And Connor takes that puck. And he just puts it right into that spot. And again, so now he, he, he's gone short side, kind of mid up in that arm. He scored on him uh, like low, far stick, just above the pad. Now he goes, now he goes high blocker, right under the bar, right? Well, by that point in time, I mean, the goaltender is, is like, okay, what next? He, he, I mean, Bedard, you know, and he owns him. Bedard owns him now. <laughs> and you know how it works. You, you're a former goalie. And when the goaltender owns a shooter, you know, it becomes like, you know, hey, what do you want to pay to get out of jail? Right? <laughs> I own you. Like, you know, you, you, you're not getting out of jail, mister. Right? Like, you know, the, the, the bond requirement comes in, you know, in a, the, to use uh, you know, that term for hockey. Right? But at the end of it, like, you know, Bedard, because, because again, he, he does things that he's, I, he's sizing it up. He's sizing it up, and when they can see the the opportunity to take advantage, they're ready to pounce because their hands are quick, mm -hmm. their 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 mind is quick in terms of being able to make plays. You can't be a great player unless you can operate in tight spaces, and that certainly is the case if you want to translate your skills to the National Hockey League. Mm -hmm. Connor Bedard has those things. It's like AI. They're constantly learning. I'd love to see a side by yeah, side of that first shot term. where he came down, and then the second, like the, and then the goal because it looked so similar that he that he learned from it. It'd be cool to see if you know how similar the path was, and 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 and, and that's the great thing. Connor McDavid, same thing, right? Learns learns as he's going and computes and figures out what it's going to be like. What do you like about? Uh, but our shot in, in particular, and not just like accuracy or how hard it, but you know, the hand position, what makes his shot, uh, I guess, I guess so effective. What do you see in it? Well, th th there's three things. Number one, it, it, it's the ability to, to, to get the pocket in, in, into a spot where you can get a shot off. Like that's hand quickness. That's hand, you know, the, I call those fine puck skills. Those are fine puck skills. You know, Dean, there's a big difference between doing finishing work as, as a carpenter and just putting up the, uh, the frame. Those are mm -hmm. two very different skills. You, you might, you, you might be using nails, but it's very, it's very, it's a very different skill. And, you know, shooting the puck, if you can't get that pocket to, to where your hands can, 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 can take full advantage, it's not going to matter. He, he does that exceptionally well because he's got fast hands. Number two, he's got an unbelievable release. So, you know, that puck, when he sees an opening, right, he, he, he can get the puck off quick and, and he has a chance to get set. Number three, he disguises it. There's not a big wind-up like where he's taking the puck and it's like, okay, goalie, here it comes. It's going to go low stick, right? Like, he, 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 because the hands are quick, that's the first thing. Because he's got a great release. Well, now, uh, you know, the, the disguise on the release now on the shot 
Does he give the, does it afford the goaltender? You can be accurate, you can have quick hands, you have a quick, but if you show off where you're going with the puck, goaltender's gonna stop it. And the better the goaltender, the harder it is gonna be score on it. Puck maneuverability in tight areas, great release and disguise. Yeah, the hallmarks of a, of a great shot. We'll see it on display tonight. Uh, we mentioned the Canadian team, one of the best. Overall tournament, when you look at such great talent that is still one and two years away, these guys are going to have a chance to break records. Obviously, the Regina Pats are going to hope that they're in the playoffs with Connor Bedard and he's not in this tournament in a normal year. But the fact that some of these guys are, are coming in right now so young, one and two years away, double underagers, is this one of the better tournaments, talent-wise, that you've had a chance to cover? Well, uh, yeah, I would say it's uh, when you when you look at, and, and what makes it so good is it, it is you have you have these superb younger players that are just adding to the skill level of the, of the players that are seventeen and eighteen. So when you add a Shane Wright, you add a Connor Bedard and a Matt Mitchkoff and a Lane Hudson from the USA, and certainly Ivan Marashchenko, you know you. you that's how a tournament, that's when you get these, and, and, and those are, uh, like the players I named are 04s and 05s. They're not late 03s that might be in the 2022 draft. I, I'm naming the kids that are tr that, that can come back to the tournament next year. All the kids I just named can all come back to the tournament next year. Shane Wright can play in the U18 tournament next year. <laughs> stop and think about that for a second. I know. Stop, just stop and think. Okay, Shane Wright, Mirage the Chick. Like, I mean, Mitch Mishkov has 11 goals. He'd come back next year. Okay, he will be right come back next year. And you know, think about it. like he, he leading the tournament this year in goals. I mean, he could come back next year and get 15. I mean, that, that's where that's where a tournament, uh, you know, gets an elevated. Uh, status with respect to uh, the quality of player in it. And, and I don't think there's any question that this tournament has uh, has had that. And, uh, you know, you, you, you look to it and, and, and just and just the uh, the excitement of the players playing, uh, you know, they've done a great job down here in Frisco getting the tournament off. And, you know, it's you can see the kids, they're excited. I mean, it'll be an exciting game. A Russia-Canada mm -hmm. game is always exciting. It'll be an exciting game. And don't forget, at the U-17 tournament uh, in uh, Alberta and Saskatchewan, the gold medal game was in Medicine Hat. Russia won the gold medal. This is the 03 group. This is the 03 group. There was Svechkov and Chibrikov. They were on that team. They'd like to add a U-18 gold medal to their uh, trophy case. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. 9 p.m. Eastern, uh, 7 p.m. Mountain Time, where I am. Have a great game with uh, Brian Mudrick tonight. We'll all be tuning in, and uh, can't wait to see what uh, unfolds. Thanks, as always, Craig. Yeah, thank you, Dean. This is a serious message. Craig Button joins us on the Ultimate Franchise Fantasy Sports Hotline. Become a scout and make money while providing prospects to the Ultimate Franchise Hockey League. Pay that man his money. I'm your Huckleberry. Check out the details at www.uffsports.com. It's serious. I like it a lot. I said we got a winner. UFFS, you own the game. Love. Love, love, love talking prospects with uh, Craig Button. You'll be able to see him with Brian Mudrick on the broadcast tonight on TSN. As mentioned, 9 p.m. Eastern, uh, 8 p.m. Central, or local time where the uh, tournament is being played, 7 p.m. in the Mountain Time Zone, 6 p.m. Pacific. And make sure you get in your questions for Craig's counsel. We'll be doing that in the next little while where you can ask about uh, story time, uh, you know, just different things about his career, or you can ask about some scouting tips. Uh, we'll do that to wrap up season two, and so that'll be a week or two after the uh, NHL draft, which, of course, is in July. But if you'd like to get a question in, trackingthedraft at gmail.com is how you can email me. Uh, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, please subscribe. Let me know what you think of the show. Leave us a review. If you're on uh, watching on UFSN, just click the uh, subscribe button and the bell and you get a notification every time we put out a fantasy show. Uh, and also, if you're listening, uh, just wherever you get your podcasts, uh, let us know. Leave us a uh, review. And uh, make sure, of course, you are checking out the brand new website, www.uffsports.com. It is 
uh, amazing. It is uh, just simply uh, fantastic. There is so much you can do on there. You could register as a fan, as a scout. Uh, if you're a staff member, if you own a team like I do, uh, the Duckman's domination in the UFHL, and um, you know the, the the score coin token is just blowing up. So get in, get on the train right now while you can, uh, because uh, yeah, it's not going to be um, this low. The 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 score coin is going up. Uh, the the fantasy platform is blowing up. It is absolutely awesome. And of course, we have the Ultimate Fantasy Sports Network. Check it out. Great shows there. We just launched today, Full Count Fantasy Baseball. We streamed it uh, at 10 a.m. this morning. Um, this is being on uh, Thursday. Uh, so check out UFSN, uh, the YouTube channel, for all your one-stop fantasy sports shop needs. And if you want to check out some other podcasts, it's at Podcast Alley. You can find my shows there. Of the sports variety, also a cannabis education podcast as well. So check that out, podcastalley.ca. And if you'd like to advertise on this show, get in touch with me, tracking the draft at gmail.com. Big thanks to uh, UFFS uh, for bringing us Craig Button on the UFFS hotline. And of course, for the Director of Scouting with TSN, Mr. Craig Button, for his passion, knowledge, and time. Check him out on the broadcast with Brian Mudrick tonight, and we'll continue tracking the draft again next week. Thank you so much for joining us on the show, whether you're watching or you're listening. This is where the stars of tomorrow are discovered. Thanks so much. Enjoy the game tonight. Canada, Russia. Does it get any better? Uh, uh, uh. Oh, uh-huh.